So, September meeting, any additions or corrections? Uh, motion to approve. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Excuse me? I didn't hear what you said. What'd you say? So, no, second. Sorry. <laughs> I'll get in the room, go in the group here in a second, I promise. <laughs> it's been a while. I'm a little rusty. I apologize. It's okay. Honor of the board. Side effect. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> Side effect. Uh, uh, the officer has this. If you have any questions for me, because there's nothing unusual about it. Um, we did transfer the money from 45 on the When's the next commissioner's meeting? Is there another one in October or first of November? First of November. Um, first of November. Okay. Put me on the agenda for that meeting. And concerning Claims. Uh, we do have one claim. I have one more thing. Oh. Uh, your 2022 budget worksheet. I'm going to give it to Barry. Um, they did not change anything, which they know they can't cancel. <coughs> and they respect what we are doing, and it will be approved on Thursday. Approved on Thursday. Right. Do I need a motion to approve the budget of 2022? Sure. I do or don't? No. She said no, you say We've yes. We've already done it. We've already done it. That is correct that we could do it again, but we needed a motion to approve the auditors. Yes, I know that, but I wanted to make sure of that. Okay. So do I have a motion to approve the auditors report? So I'm going to second. All in favor say aye. Aye. So moved. Second? Aye. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Those Those carried. Claim. We have one claim. Number 223 in HWC for $5,737.72. It's just a progress report on. 
amendments, you guys did you, since you guys made the amendments, we'll have to approve. You'll have to approve the uh, the amendments on the final regulatory resolution. So um, it'll just it'll be the same. We'll just include the new the, uh, the uh, Florida and Burlington areas. But we are on schedule. If, if just so happens it doesn't get voted on or tabled um, tonight, then we would um, just postpone with you guys on what the next timeline would look like moving forward. So uh, the end of the year is not a drop dead. Just means that the new AD would revert to January of 2021. So the ideal scenario would be to get it closed out this year, but it is not. We made the point that it's not a necessity. Yet. So, yeah. Any questions for Jake? Yeah. Uh, so So they're requiring the area uh, the driveway to be staked and some brush to be removed. There's some brush on the west side um, there in front of the clinic and by Packers. So um, what we're hoping to do is get the contractor uh, get, get the bids on November 8th. And what I'd like to ask if, if at the next meeting is if we can authorize, um, we'll, take, we'll take them under advisement puts in that they want so many days to relocate stuff and if they they're on the clock now but if you add up all their time and it's you know worst case scenario it pushes us a month back um, which could which could hurt us um, but if we're trying to line it up when we're done then it not starts and we're everything works so the perfect world can you get an lead from Jessica? I would like to see that. I would love, I would love to be able to tell them, okay, this is where you're going to go, and this is the time you have. But for whatever reason, maybe uh, doesn't play by the same rules as other parts of the country. So, um, it's they're in our right. I mean, they're in the states right away. Right away, we're calling them. So they got. It's just them getting the contract yeah. to do it. 
which would, and, and, we, and we've talked to them enough that I think we'll be good. I just, the only thing is, if we don't get the contract, the contractor on board um, soon enough to stake the right of way, then we may have to either have our engine, our surveyor go out there and stake the right of way, and we reduce it from the contractor's um, bid, and then get somebody local to clear the right of way. Hopefully, if we get them on board, then we'll get that done. Should there be something written in there? Well, what their cost is, the yeah. contractor's cost is to clean and yeah. the right of way. And the state. So, yeah, we're going to probably issue them down. We have, another, we have uh, three more weeks to ask questions. So, if we get questions, we'll issue them down. Part of that down, we'll probably put it there. Stick them right away as a line item so we know if we have to take it out. But I think if we get them awarded and moving quick enough, we won't have to do that. Okay. How much? Unless they come back and say they're staking right away is 20,000, then we'll yeah. do it ourselves. How much time do they have then to, to stake that? I mean, they, they won't be gearing up for the project. Right, right. And that's what we need to do is by addendum, we need to or say deadline by December 21st, which, well, I think NIPSCO said the earliest they would be there would be December 27th. So the day after, by Christmas, you need to have the right away staked. So, yeah. And hopefully there's not. Do you anticipate more than two bidders? Uh, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure. Um, this is a unique enough project that you might not be uh, unique enough. Unique enough, is that what I said? Yes. <laughs> uh, you know, you're, you're in the state right away, but you're, it, the work's not specifically complex, but operating within the state right away. Some contractors would, would shy away from that. So. Two, uh, two. Yeah. You know, in past projects, we've had a lot of bids. I think on this on uh, 625 and 100, we had five bids. On, on the industrial park, we had seven. So um, we, we've tried to give them enough time. We've tried to say, you know, but, but there are contractors some, are busy right now, so they're yeah, not yeah. bidding stuff. <laughs> Someone would, would choose not to just because of Possibly, possibly. Yeah. Well, that's good. I don't know. We're gonna we're gonna call. We're gonna contact some more bidders in the next week, probably. Just as of now, I mean, it's only been out in the street for two weeks. Less than that. Still pretty, pretty green here. Yeah. And they're they're letting bids for the asphalt in March. The state is going to. Do you have any idea how long that project will last? That's a pretty long project. They're going to Ross, right? They've got a long, yeah, it's a long stretch, and there's a lot, there are some uh, culvert work that has to be done, and some curb work in other locations. So I don't know off the top of my head what the, what the duration is, but we're trying to, you know, yeah. as much as we can, we've talked to the state to try and get on their schedule. Has the state said where they're going to start? Crossroads in bad shape. In the 26th detour. Yeah. And just a question off the top of my head is on the contractor, since we had a dry August, are they all caught up or are they still behind? I don't know. Okay. I didn't know whether you heard the talk or anything about it. So. Actually, the, the school um, is requesting funds from the TIF district. 
on the RDC for you guys. Uh, we have a, a need for additional funds uh, because we're falling short with our tax dollars. And so uh, when we look at uh, what goes on, uh, I believe last year you guys collected a little over a million dollars in, in revenue uh, through the taxing unit of Delphi school system. And you know, normally we see uh, those tax dollars when we collect off your house or my house, about 68% of that goes to the schools. So you can see where we've had some, uh, you know, uh, return a little bit on those uh, dollars affecting us. Um, you know, it, it's just a small part um, to help support our schools so we can enhance the, uh, our uh, ESL programs. Can, can you clarify deterrent? I'm not sure what you mean by deterrent. You said it, it's a deterrent? Well, no, not deterrent, but it's, we, do, we don't get the funds, okay? You, there is taxable dollars that, that would come potentially to us that you guys gather through our tax rate. If I had a tax rate half that, you would have half the funds too. So it's based on our tax rate that gets taxed upon. Can you say that again, please? I'm, I'm just making sure I understand exactly what you're saying. Okay, you understand that the school does get 68% of the tax rate within the school district of like full tax dollars. Okay. Okay. So that's what we're basing uh, our uh, assumptions on. Okay. But, but I mean, and, and I don't want to get off the top of the no, I mean, we're, we're saying there's a difference between assessed value and taxes. Assessed value is right, but our taxable of the assessed value, we're not getting the full assessed values uh, because of TIF. Right, but that we would, our tax rate would still be in play, and there would be, I'm not gonna sit here and, and argue. Well, no, I'm just saying, you have a levy, right? Right. Do you, do you, you not agree you that- you collect your levy? Do you not no. agree that our tax dollars, or taxes that you collect off for your TIF, is a direct correlation to the rates and tax dollars that the school uh, basically so charges the, out? The rate and the tax dollars are two different Okay, that, and let me let me just go ahead and finish, and then you guys can make a decision. Okay. Uh, again, uh, we just asked for a small part of the support uh, so we can enhance our services to our children and to the ESL, as I said, our ESL program and buses. That is a direct effect from the TIF. Uh, we have an increased Hispanic population. What's ESL? Uh, uh, especially for uh, English, second, English language. second language. Okay. So uh, I appreciate your comments. I think we can get done a little quicker. Uh, so anyway, you know, if we're not going to have, uh, you know, it's putting pressure on our schools. And, and some of you, we've already talked about this a little bit, but the cost of supporting that uh, it is what we really need to have happen. You know, when you look at it. You know, we just asking for a support to the school. Um, when you look at a, a thing of anybody wanting to come, you know, live around here, a school that's supported by its community attracts people, businesses that want their children to have a high quality education, and that's why they'll come live here. <coughs> and we're just trying to help all those who are currently living here and for the future. You know, I don't have a say so in tax rates or what you may or may not be able to do or what you may want to do. We're coming to you just saying that we have a need and that we want to be able to step up to the plate and say, hey, we do have a need. I know that you guys will make, be making a decision on how much that you may want to collect here, either full or part or whatever. What we're saying is this, is that with the amount of money, you know, you guys have, you got projects coming down the line, we know that. And we're not saying take away from that. All we're saying is just a small support to help us to get through so we can start servicing off our children a lot better. So. Are you looking for a dollar amount or anything? Oh, sorry, I didn't put that in there. 300,000 is what we're looking for, actually. I have, I'll pass this out to you guys. Oh, okay. No, sorry, I'm glad you said that. <laughs> I got uh, I got I got, I got, I got a little bit. It's okay. That's why I wrote it out. Oh yeah, there it is. So is your three hundred dollar request at a one time request or a brand or well if you're asking me, I'm telling you I like to have it every year. But <laughs> yeah. I, I, I oh sorry, sorry. Thank you. So you have a three hundred thousand dollar shortfall in your budget?
budget? Is that what? Thanks. So. Yeah, we normally have uh, between two hundred fifty and three hundred thousand dollars a year. We have to take out of our educational fund, okay, and supplement our operation, which is what our local tax dollars support. So we're taking our state revenue uh, per kid, and we've got to move it down. Uh, I guess you wasn't at a meeting, so I'll, let me fill in a little bit more. We didn't take. Um, the ESSER money or the COVID money, so to speak, and spend on uh, equipment or anything like that. What we did is we reduced class sizes, K through three. F ESSER, is that what you said? Yeah, ESSER, COVID, the COVID money that has came in. Okay. We have reduced our class sizes down to 20 and under, K through uh, three at this point, and we'll go a little higher. Uh, we've seen a big need of that. Uh, we've added actually uh, another pre-K into our system. We reduced uh, our, uh, from two years ago, we went kindergarten at four classes, down to uh, up to six classes right now. So we're putting the effort and the money into our schools to better educate, and so people want to come here. We want to be known as a school of 20 now, but we can't support it long term by keep taking out my education fund, or I should say ours, and bring it down, putting in the operation. You can only so so you just you're just taking that statutory limit out of operations and putting it into their into your. I mean, excuse we're me. doing it the other way around. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, we're transferring it into our operations. Right. Fund. And you're just is, using that statutory limit that you're that you can use. Right. Is that correct. Okay. Yep. Um, uh, just wanted to clarify. No. That. So um, back to your original point. And I, I that, that's fantastic news. Like I, I love everything you just said about making Delphi a place that people want to come and be educated. Uh, I guess my question is, um, uh, or what I want to know is how that affects the budget long term. And if this $300,000 is something that we invest in one year, is it, is, are we just doing something that only affects the school's operation for one year, or is it a continued uh, outcome? Or I mean, it, will this $300,000 be required to continue that outcome, or is this a gap funding? That would be a question that I would have. Right. Well, I mean, today to sit as things sit today, it's a need every year. We've been doing it for the last four years, five years, so supplying that type of dollars, you know, as it leads, especially in the last two years, three years, that we've really uh, had a higher pressure on our ESL. Uh, right now, honestly, our uh, um, on our English uh, on the ESL part of things. We really probably ought to have three to four more people in place, teachers, to help those kids that are K through second, third grade. Actually, if we can get them to be speaking English at the rate that they should be, then everything else, the pressure, everything else down the line becomes a better, not only for us, but for the community. Because what happens is if they're not speaking that the language of English by the time they're uh, fourth grade, I believe, or even what we heard today, they will be two to four years behind a person that does by the time they hit being a senior, which means graduation rates, all those will kind of go down, which is funding actually for our part to boot. So that's why we're here is to see if there is uh, opportunity uh, from getting support, you know, for you guys, but 300,000, it's kind of the, where we're bleeding right now. Uh, that thing could change tomorrow, as we all know. The fundings in the state can change. There's some other things, of course. Uh, there could be another round of money that may be okay for, but on the same token, today, if I'm sitting here, I said, yeah, I'd like to ask for it for every year. For, for at least for a while until some other things can change. So, uh, just one more question yep. on that, Ronnie. Um, so ESL is the program that you're highlighting what, what's the population that you're serving in your ESL program today, and then what has that looked like historically? Well, uh, historically is this. What was it uh, prior to uh, uh, Indiana Packers coming in versus now? It's grown. It's grown every year. We have some very high quality um, uh, Hispanics that uh, are dual language, and they're doing great. We look for it to keep increasing. Uh, it, like a lot of government numbers, they're hard to obtain, they're vague because of the way accountability was in the past. But I can sit and tell you that, uh, and you're more than welcome to come through the school anytime, 
you can talk to one of the other members there, his wife has a direct effect on them. I mean, they know. And so, you know, this isn't a thing about saying, right, it, it's to support that, along with the ESL program, the money that's draining off can be utilized to lower class sizes the rest of the way. It's draining off? Yeah, we're draining money off our funds, our education fund. Oh, okay. The I just, so you're, you're yeah. Okay. okay. I mean, we have, you know, you can go on down a little farther. Look at our uh, our staff, right? We have custodians, all our non-support staff. I mean, we, we got to try to give, you know, the teacher raises is kind of that uh, education fund, but everything else that you look at your bus drivers, all the other people that live in your community, that, that they can go up here at McDonald's and get $3 maybe higher than what we're currently paying, that's how it's come. That is the part of that, all that whole support to maintain uh, that education part. So, yeah. And, and I wanted to, to circle back to what we were talking about earlier. Uh, in, in terms of your levy, you have a levy, correct? And are you collecting your maximum? More max now. You're collecting your maximum levy. So additional assessed value, how do you think that would affect your tax uh, collection? How do you get more money on your assessed value if uh, you increase your uh, houses out there? You get more because of the rate, I mean, your values go up, everything goes and up. That's what I'm saying, right? The, Don't you get more money? If you turn around and put in a uh, development like over a floor or Burlington, don't you get more money off? That's how you're paying for your developments of other dollars? Right, and I'm not asking or, about that, I'm asking about yours. Well, it's, it, it's no, about, it's about do you believe that you would get more tax revenue if you had more assessed value? If, if, uh, if, if we have more assessed value, we will get more, not based off the tip, but if houses out here become higher value, you're looking at houses that right now, I think Carroll County's assessed values is 123,000, where it was 93,000 maybe a couple years ago. You know, not a big jump, there's some jump. We, do, we did benefit from that a little bit. You tell me what the value of the house and assessed value is, I mean, more predominantly farm ground. Uh, and, and, and so we may have to be talking about two different things, but if you have a levy, you cannot collect more than that levy. Mm -hmm. Now, you guys do some things that are different because right. you have geo bonds that are outside of the levy. Right. Um, but that but, cannot be done for, uh, you know, right. yeah, you know what? We may have to do a referendum. I'll be quite honest about it. And, and I've said it that if we don't get support, we will have to do an educational referendum. And that that's gonna you know what affect a lot of things. But so we can take in, uh, what, what I'm, my bottom line is I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. We could do away with this tip, and you wouldn't get any more additional tax revenue towards your levy. That well, true to a degree. Right? No, that's true. You cannot collect more than your levy. Are we maxed out though? Maybe we are. I mean, I mean, no, we, are, we have to be because we're not getting enough. I would yeah. assume that you are, but I don't know right. what you are. That's why I asked the question. But like, I just want to be. Let's you know, since we're all working towards the I school improving, right. like this, the, the, the existence of the TIF is the only way that additional tax dollars can be collected to be used for things like this. If we abolish the TIF and put all of that tax revenue, or excuse me, all of that assessed value back into the taxing units, mm -hmm. you couldn't collect another nickel of towards your levy. Right, but. So, you guys are collecting, and you are benefiting from our tax rate. Is that not true? From your tax rate? Mm -hmm. uh, if that assessed value was to go back no, into... No, no, you are today, this million dollars that you're getting, if we're 68% tax rate out here, and we drop that to zero, how much money will you get out of that million dollars? You won't get as much. It doesn't, it doesn't have anything to do with it, because we re we, we're working off an established date. So when, when a TIF is formed, the assessed value is locked in. So you're saying that your assessed value of Packers, when you first get the TIF versus what it will be five years from now, you won't increase any money off that increase AV value. If that changes, just are you saying just Indiana Packers? I'm talking about your TIF, period. Okay, if the AV yeah. changes, the tax revenue will change within the TIF. Okay, so it's the same thing, right? No, it's that, so, that, well, we can talk about well, this later. That's right. I, I'm not here to take your guys' time. I'm just here no, to... No, I think it's, it's, it's an important thing to discuss. I have to talk about it. But, and anytime you want to have a work session, you're more than welcome to come. We can set up a work session on that, and actually it'd be great education for all of us to get together and even say, hey, how's both entities work, right? Well, I think that's because that, that's where we need to be, and we need to understand your budget. Go ahead, Larry. My question for you is, 
you are focusing on one program, the ESL program. No, it's it's like there's buses there too. I mean, this is. Wait, but, uh, okay, go ahead. Let me ask my question: Is are you focusing on the ESL program, or are you focusing on the bus? From the, my standpoint on the RBC, I cannot purchase you a bus. We've been told that two or three times. We cannot purchase bus for school. Right. So then I'm looking at you're going back to the ESL program. Mm -hmm. What's the cost of your ESL program then? We, if we you can, want help from a that, if, if you, you want, want to help from a be specific a, about right. a program that you're wanting money for, I need to know what your cost of that program is to whether I can say justify putting in. Three hundred thousand dollars into an ESL program right. and cost you two hundred thousand. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. And, and that's that's fair fair thing. I mean, again, we said buses, it's services. It's just, I mean, it's a big thing that services those ESL kids. If I look at probably what's uh, right to, right today, we probably look at seventy five thousand each, just for the teachers, the benefits, and everything. Like I said, we need probably three. We actually need to reduce class size about two more times, three times actually. So we could well be talking over four hundred thousand dollars if you really want to true. Just on the ESL educational side of things to enhance that part. So again, this isn't a thing coming and say, hey, it's three hundred thousand up. What we're saying is this: we could really support and use that to help our class sizes maintain where we're at, to help that ESL because that's all part of the ESL problem program is not just a class for those, it's every class and how it has to be supported. So additional aids, additional you know, uh, translators, actually things like that that we need. So to your point, yes, I understand. Again, uh, I, could, I could put a case together for you guys that would show probably half a million dollars each, I, I but have, that's not the point. The point is that we want to come to you to see what support we can have. We have to show the state I understand. So if we're going to do this, we need to know what you're asking for and what you want us to support. I I cannot say give me three hundred thousand dollars for this thing because of the ESL program, but I don't have nothing to show right. for that. Well, that's something like I said. That's what we're coming. It's to start the, the steps so because I know you've got a, you a timeline to, too. So you the school has to come up with something to show us. Oh, we can come up with a budgetary thing that shows you that this is how many I don't teachers. need a budgetary thing. Well, that's I what need to know what it's costing you on the ESL program. If you're going to be so specific on an ESL program, I need to know what your cost is so I can justify whatever I give you. Well, that's what I'm saying. It'll be a budgetary thing that shows here's how many teachers, this is the cost, right? I mean, that's what, that's what you're asking. I think we're also asking for historic data. What's that? I think that what Larry's saying is we want historic data. It's easy to say we're going to spend half a million dollars on this next year or in a given year. We would also like to know where it has been historically, and if there's a if there's a major jump, why that major jump exists. Well, that's yeah. We'll see what we can do. Uh, we, you know, we're. I, I'm, I'm just saying, Kirk, I'm not saying they're saying no. Oh, no, no. I, I gotta have, I gotta have all the dots and the T's and everything crossed before I can go to state with it. So I know it's gonna get approved. So that's why we're asking for right. more information. That's fine, and, that, and that's fine. I mean, that's not a big deal. We understand, we understand what the, uh, you know, everything yeah. cross dotted in, double checked, right? I mean, we're the same entity and government as, as you guys are. And a lot of things are similar. There's a lot that's not. We understand that. And so that's what we just wanted to come to you guys and say, hey, we have a need. Again, you might not be able to do anything. That's fine, but it's like anything else, right? If you don't ask and you don't show the concern for your kids, you'll never get it. So I appreciate your time. If you've got anything else. Question, how much COVID money did the school receive and how did you prioritize where those dollars Okay, so a lot of the COVID dollars, uh, we get, um, we had uh, people we paid for their um, uh, being off from COVID. The non-certified people, the non-contractual people, we kept them employed, which puts a drain into us. Uh, ESSER money, I'm not sure we got about 
yeah, about 1.2 million is where we got, or what we got. Uh, there could be some more coming from the, the feds. I don't know, they keep talking about doing something, but who knows. Um, but uh, we took that money, uh, was able to, uh, we had some repairs that we did that was under the COVID guidelines of that money, just like you guys have your uh, guidelines. But the, primarily what we did, we increased class sizes. And increased, so we increased, 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 or not increased class size, increased the, the uh, classes. Okay, so we added, uh, like I said, for the last two years, we've over, over about six classes. And if you think of each teacher, like I said, <coughs> 75, a lot of them is probably closer to 80, trying to get full benefits. It doesn't take long to do it. And we're still working on that, right? We didn't go out and spend the 1.2 million on one project. We did it over a two year period here, figuring that we'll get some things back into line to see until the state costs about giving us a little bit more money on the educational side. That all went to the educational side, not the funding on the bottom. We didn't buy buses for it. We didn't buy that stuff because we felt in order to make the community a better place, we had to reduce those K through three class sizes. And unless you're in education, it, it's hard to, and I'm not an education person. You all know that, but I got to live. And so it does make a big difference. And we're seeing some results already we need to even get down there because even with what we've added, we still have class size of 22, 23, 24 even. We keep creeping up a little bit, which is a good thing. But again, we didn't take that ESSER money and go buy buses like other people did and now they're out here trying to figure out what to do because what we did was what was right for the kids. And anything else, Larry? You got anything? I don't have anything else. Okay, first of all, just to add to that, one of the things that we are facing right now is a significant learning loss in our in our building from the time we were closed for the entire fourth quarter. I can't see you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm trying to think around the corner. Right. Um, so we are trying to come back along with everybody in the state, a very significant learning loss. Um, our data is showing that that time we were closed for fourth quarter, trying to transition back in. So. Lowering the class sizes is trying to get more so that we can sit there and try to individualize learning. So that, that was really kind of the push behind. We also are seeing an increase in our English as a second language learning population. They were out of school as well as everyone else, yet we're still moving kids forward grade levels. So we are, we've got to do something to combat that. Uh, we also are severely struggling to get um, translators or interventionists that are bilingual. We right now I feel like we're at crisis level. We got to be honest. I've got one up at the high school, middle school, but here's the bottom line: McDonald's pays more than we do. I mean, I got to be honest. What's an interventionist? Um, that's like uh, someone that works with. They're they're not a, don't have a teaching license per se, but they are an aide that works one on one with students and does full hour mediation, does your curricular programming. So they support the students. Um, so right now, through our elementary, we do not have a bilingual person. And if you think about your the little ones coming in, that's probably the most significant time that we need to have interventions for those kiddos. And like I just said, McDonald's pays better right now. We've got to start increasing how much we can pay. And I really would like to see us could get a teacher that could perform those services K through six because it's a significant issue. We had an amazing interventionist who worked her, she worked endlessly and she retired. I mean, COVID kind of just said, I'm done. And she was, you know, an hourly position. So that's my first concern. Um, the second concern is I guess I want to ask you if we add houses in this community. What is it that you feel is a need for the school? Like the school should have programming that you think would help attract people to these subdivisions, to these houses that you're going to bring. I think it's a great conversation to have. That's, that's where I want the conversation to be, is how, how, do we, how do we make the Delphi school system an absolute asset that we're being people off like West Lafayette 
to get them to come here. It's because they want their kids to go to school. That, that's the conversation. That's where, I mean, that's not a 15 minute conversation. No, it's not. But that's the <laughs> thing that I think we are missing the boat on. And I've got a lot of ideas. I know our um, school corporation and our board has a lot of ideas. I'm, you know, I'm right now talking with Jacob. SIA just donated robots for us. You know, so bringing in the manufacturing because education is changing. I'm sorry, but it is. And going to college was is great and wonderful, and I, I did my stint there, but we've got a population that is not going to go to college, and they need to leave our doors and able to walk into a job. They've got to be certified in walking into a job. And so we've got that whole population, and it's difficult being a small school. I mean, our resources are extremely tied. And one of the things that you have to understand, we are moving money from the education fund right now into operations support us but the state legislature is also mandating a lot of things that are going to tie our money so right now there's a 45 percent i don't know if you know about this ceiling that our teachers have to be paid at least 45 percent um, greater than 45 percent has to be spent on the teacher's salary so and that does not count benefits that is everybody's salary so we do i feel like we do a nice job of benefits for our staff. I think they deserve benefits. But that's tying us right now. So that legislature just came in. If you're not aware, we were just mandated that everybody has to move up to $40,000 salaries. So that was another hit. So that money that we're shifting over here, you know, the coconut came and move in to help support, you know, the pay for our interventionists, for our bus drivers, you know, for our building, for our buses, that money that we're shifting. I'm not seeing we're going to be able to do much more shifting with it, with all these new state mandates. Um, I want to add manufacturing in. I know there's other programs, but we're going to need support to do that. And I think the manufacturing, I think if we start building the programs, if we have nice facilities, the people will come to the houses because I, I, I firmly believe when I was looking for houses, I looked at the school corporation first. I got to be honest. You know, then I went. So I think that's the thing. I think we can work together in a relationship with the piece that they're going to come because they want their children to come to Delphi Community School Corporation because we've got more individualized you know, teaching teacher-student ratio. We've got manufacturing. We have a great business program. We've got computer program. You know, all those different programs, it's really difficult to compete with a Harrison High School that has, you know, huge, huge amount of so that's a conversation for a later date. But I just wanted to kind of add to that so that you understand there is some stuff coming down that's causing that issue in our education fund. So, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Great foresight. Thank you. Well, we'll discuss this once we get more information from the school about some of the things that they're looking at. And we can go from that direction. And I would like to, honestly, I want to hear what you think would be a draw for our school, too. Do you hear what I'm saying? In other words, what you're looking from the outside, being in the community, saying, hey, this is a program that, you know, we would be willing to look at and help support. Because I think together we've got to look both ways. Because, yes, of course, I'm, my, I'm tunnel vision and I'm all about the students and the kids and the building. And you've got to look at the other component. Right. Okay. Yeah. I agree, we've got to work together and communicate back and forth with each other. So, all right, uh, anything else? Okay, I'm going to tell, tell you why I'm going to the commissioners meeting. Why are you on the commissioners meeting? Because I'm going to tell the commissioners how many people they need to look for getting for 2022. So, if you're going to come back for 2022, not very know, so I know what positions we are in here on this commission because the commissioners and the council also need to start thinking about who to replace. And you, you have three appointments that we have to do. Excuse me? You have three appointments. Yeah. You, I say you, the commissioners. Yes. The commissioners have the three appointments. And the council has to yes. so. That's all I have. And there's three over here. Right? Yeah. Two, 
Motion to adjourn. I don't think we have the commissioners. All commissioners. All commissioners. Yeah. 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 On the air. Uh, my question is, uh, do we have a meeting on the 8th? On November? Right. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, the second. So that's that. That's our normal meeting. Yes, it is. But, but that's where we're hearing the, what, what was discussed? Yeah. We're opening the bids. The bids. 